joining us on the Odges Burnson One Question series. My name is Jules McKean and I head up the media practice out of London for Odges Burnson. On the summer series, the second question of the summer series today, I'm very pleased to be joined by Tom Morton, Global Chief Strategy Officer at RGA. Hello, Tom. Hello there. Um, as the RGA's Global Strategy Chief Strategy Officer, Tom designs businesses and brands for a more human future. He's executive leader of RGA strategy discipline, and he guides the development of everything from new brands, to services, and campaigns. And Tom created the RGA Strat Pack, which is a collective of over 100 marketing scientists, strategists, and connections planners, whose collaboration sparks new insights at the intersection of these disciplines. He also oversees RGA's brand consulting, media and connections, and influencer marketing practices. He joined RGA in 2016 as SVP strategy, and before that, was Director of Strategy at Co-Collective and Chief Strategy Officer at Have Us Worldwide in New York and TWA in London. He's worked with a bunch of clients as diverse as Uber, Amazon, Samsung, Verizon, ESPN, Pepsi, Google, Virgin, Sony and the Museum of Modern Art. He's won Golden Effie Awards and I IPA Effectiveness Awards and served as a judge for both. Tom is one of the creators and founding judges of the Cannes Lions for Creative Strategy, which sadly is not happening in Cannes this year or last year. Um, Tom serves on the boards of the American Advertising Federation and the Wharton Business School's Future of Advertising Program. I'm really, really chuffed that you could join us today, Tom. So, you know what the question is. It is, in 12 months' time, what is our industry going to be talking about? Well, I think the next 12 months is going to be about what I call the radical return and how companies navigate it. Because um, I, I think there's this false expectation in the air that we're about to return to normal, as if the people in the companies are going to just return to the positions they were in back in like February 2020 and pick up where they left off. Um, and like that's not happening. I think we're beginning a year of radical return that could be every bit as consequential for, uh, for businesses and brands as the year and a half we spent in lockdown. And the big thing we'll be talking about is how well companies have navigated that. Mm. Because I think we're going to see, I think three big forces are going to be like finding their next level in the next 12 months. Um, there's that balance between what is personal and what is societal, that balance between what is in person and what is remote, and also that balance of power, frankly, between brands and their customers, employers and their workers. So like for businesses, and the big thing we're going to be seeing is radical return is an absolute resetting of what is in person and what is remote. Obviously, yeah, it's when you really impact your teams, isn't it? How, you, how are people going to manage that? Well, let, 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 let's, let, let's look at what this is going to mean for businesses first, because um, obviously last year there was this massive, massive hike um, in digital business because the companies had to serve their customers remotely. And now we're about to go into a world where that's going to be a choice. We're not going to go back to normal. There's going to be this reset of like what works well in person what works well remotely. And that may not be the same things as it was before. Um, so the Gap last week announced that uh, they were going to be an online only retailer in the UK. That's a massive reset. Um, American Express, which is a brand that was really like built on deluxe in-person events, is now figuring out how it's going to be as awesome remotely as it was in person. And so like one of the biggest marketing investments they have right now is how to create amazing concert series with Dua Lipa, Scissor, Travis Scott. And the, the, the job there is how, rather than like, how have we just replicated um, a, a, a customer experience? It's going to be, how do you create something that's totally new? And how do you work out what is going to be great in person? What is going to be great remotely? And that's going to be a kind of choice. So there's that massive reset to be going on in business. And for brands, there's a kind of, there's almost like an ethical reset they've got mm. because a lot of companies have either been shuttered for over a year or they've been um, in a holding pattern for a year. And there's this, mo this real do-over moment now, I think, about what do you want to come back as? So th yeah. this, is, this is a very bougie example, but forgive me, because I think it's emblematic of something here. Um, there's a restaurant in New York called Eleven Madison Park. It's got three Michelin stars. It's probably America's most awarded restaurant almost certainly America's uh, most expensive one. It was shut for 16 months. It reopened a couple of weeks ago um, and it reopened vegan. It reopened with a plant-based menu. And they said that um, they were going to do no more tips and every set meal was going to uh, that they served, they would provide five meals to food insecure families. Wow. And that's kind of radical because that's, yeah, that's an organization that sat back, that looked at um, 
the supply chain they're in, uh, the economic imbalances, the working conditions in the restaurant industry. They thought this is this is too real. We we have a chance to come back as a changed creation. And I think this opportunity has opened up to all kinds of companies now. What do you want to come back as? <laughs> and that is quite, but is, do you think this, at the heart of that, is that partly because individuals are driving more purpose in their lives, that they're demanding it more of brands? Am I making too much of a leap there? I don't think you're making a leap at all. I think, um, I think everyone's had enough time away from normality to, to think about these things. Um, and I think, I think what it really reflects is there isn't going to be like a business as usual period. Yeah. Um, Cause th that, in the case of 11 Madison Park, they basically, they've looked at reality. They've looked at how people are changing. And they've decided they're actually going to act on it and come back yeah. as something better. So I mean, l l let's explore that purposing you're talking about. On the flip side, there's the companies that are declaring a return to business as usual or are trying to, to like shutter the noise yeah. of what's happening in society and come back as usual and have a, a much harder time. So there's um, a great software company called Basecamp in the US. And um, a few weeks ago, they sent a memo to all their staff. And what it announced, it said there was going to be a ban on social and political chatter on all the company's internal forums. Uh, and an end to all of their, their diversity and inclusion forums and committees in the companies. And the founder said, um, the, 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 the literal quote, if I remember it right, is um, this is going to be back to basics, back to responsibility, back to work. And of course, the staff saw it differently. And within four days of this announcement going out, a third of the entire workforce had resigned. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, which is, which is, uh, <laughs> this is a epic. It, 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 absolutely, because of course, um, what it really means is like it's no longer possible in 2021 to maintain a difference between the work of a company, the lives of its people and the impact of its activities. It's like the, the fourth wall that was in theory separating work, home and the world is basically down. That is and... fascinating. Oh, my gosh, you're so right. That is so fascinating. So there's a sort of like a cyclical thing of some of the brands are leading that change just by listening more and then the people are demanding it by voting with their feet if those brands aren't doing that and how but they must be able to create there must be brands who are struggling to to kind of build back in authenticity where perhaps they didn't have it you know you almost have to like dismantle things to be able to credibly build them back up like the restaurant did yeah, I, th I think I think a lot of workplaces would be doing that because we're, we're seeing that same dynamic with um, employees and employers now uh -huh. And like like uh, the, the reset, the reset of a power balance um, of how employees um, are willing to come back and what they're willing to return to. I mean, I, I, I talk from a U.S. perspective for a second. So the U.S. economy is growing at seven percent a year right now, which is the yeah. highest rate since like the late 90s. Job openings are at an all time high. There's like eight million vacancies in America right now. And um, and the, the, the flip side is um, quitting is at an all time high. Um, Four million people left their jobs last month in America, and it's been described as epiphany quitting. Just basically realizing, <laughs> do I have to? Is this what I want to do with my life? Or do I have to put up with this anymore? And those are those are questions that people might have asked in their heads for years before, and now they're in a position where they can actually act on it. And <clears throat> yeah, obviously, companies like you know, companies like Basecamp, who've said like we're going to create this false divide where you're not allowed to you're not allowed to talk about what's happening in the world or we're going to try and ignore what happens in your lives um, yeah. are, are, are just going to lose. Like, I think, I think there was a category mistake that Basecamp made, which is the stuff that they describe as politics is actually people talk about the conditions of their lives. Yes. It was, always the, it was always the case, wasn't it? Politics. Completely. Yeah. 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 If you're talking, if you're talking about me too, stop Asian hate, black lives matter. Those aren't hashtags. Those are basically articulations of like, do you, do you feel safe? Yes. Are you okay to go about your daily life without a threat hanging over you? Because it's really, you know, it's a, I think we're, we're seeing, as we look at like who's capable of remote working, uh, how people have adjusted, it's actually, it's quite, it's, it's only a fortunate few who can make the daily commitments of say time and emotion that a startup founder demands without having to worry about say childcare or the health of your family or what's going on in the world. And that's always been true. But that has totally risen to the surface and it's not it's not going to go away. And watching watching companies um, 
adjust to that and either mm. fumble or yeah. really find a way of like creating a new equilibrium, taking advantage of that new reality is going to be the big story, the big conversation in the next 12 months. Do you think, do you think, because it's interesting when you use the phrase about fourth wall, and I, I'm going to absolutely make a hash of, of use, utilising in this context. So I'm aware go for it, it but, go for it. But there is, there, there is a sort of, there is a sort of genuine breaking down into the personal of, of having everybody on the screens where you see their lives, you see their cats, you're in their house. Do you think that has precipitated a psychology which is like, you now know more about me than you would have done if we were all just coming to this anonymous place in the physical place in the workplace where I'm bringing one part of myself. There's, that has kind of presumably precipitated needing to know each other on a slightly more human level, perhaps. Yeah, and even if it's not knowing each other, it's just recognising it. that we, yeah. we all have stories of being on Zooms while there is chaos happening three feet to either side. And that's not, that's not unprofessional. That, that, that's life. Um, yeah. And I think, I think, I think, we've, I think, as, I think whether as workers or employers, you, you've got to recognise that's how, that's how people live their lives and, and somehow have done so and like, managed to stay in work managed to grow the economy as well and yeah. so I, I guess that, that that's that's the other big lesson that comes out of it is that bringing your whole self to work or acknowledging you've got family responsibilities those are not drags on economic growth those aren't drags on productivity those are that's the totality of who you are yeah yeah and it's just it's as you as you say it's it's, it's become it's become hard as we've known because the the stuff that you used to leave you know that leave behind you at 9 a.m uh, Monday to Friday is with you always now. Yes. And what's the big opportunity, do you think, going forward? I'm very conscious that we've got about one minute left, but Tom, you, you pulling all of this together in 12 months' time, you know, what, what opportunities will we have been able to seize as brands and as companies? Well, well, firstly, you don't wait for things to go back to normal. You go and take advantage of these things. Um, there's a big opportunity in that, uh, that reset of the balance of power between workers and employers and figuring that out. Um, there's this do-over opportunity, which is like, well, what do you want to be? What, who do you want to serve? What do you want to come back as? And finally, I think there's a change of mindset, which is, as you say, the fourth wall is down. And so um, the opportunity is just, just lose this idea that your business is operating separately from the home or the streets. Yeah. Tom, Tom Morton, Global Chief Strategy Officer of RGA, based in New York currently. Thank you so much for joining us on the one question. It's a lot to think about. It's brilliant. Jules, thank you.